Good afternoon. The Secretary General will start uh, with the pres presentation of uh, the meeting of uh, Defence Ministers and then uh, he'll be uh, here to take some of your questions. Secretary General. Good afternoon. Our thoughts remain with the Turkish people following last week's devastating earthquakes. Thousands of emergency response personnel from NATO allies have been supporting the relief efforts, including uh, with search and rescue teams, firefighters, medical personnel, and seismic experts. Moreover, uh, NATO allies and NATO has agreed to deploy shelter facilities to help accommodate uh, people displaced uh, by the earthquakes. We stand in strong solidarity with our ally, Turkey. NATO defense ministers will meet this week at an important moment for transatlantic security. We will take decisions to strengthen NATO's deterrence and defense. We will address our industrial capacity and increase the protection of our critical undersea infrastructure and we will step up and sustain our support for Ukraine. Almost one year since the invasion, President Putin is not preparing for peace. He is launching new offensives. So we must continue to provide Ukraine with what it needs to win and to achieve a just and sustainable peace. Ukraine's Defense Minister Alexei Resnikov will join us tomorrow both for the US-led contact group for Ukraine and for a meeting with NATO ministers. Together, we will address Ukraine's urgent needs. It is clear that we are in a race of logistics. Key capabilities like ammunition, fuel and spare parts must reach Ukraine before Russia can seize the initiative on the battlefield. Speed will save lives. If Putin wins in Ukraine, the message to him and other authoritarian regimes is that force is rewarded. That would make the world more dangerous and all of us more vulnerable. So I welcome the recent announcements by allies on new tanks, heavy weaponry and training uh, for Ukraine. And I look forward to further deliveries. Our message is clear. <clears throat> NATO stands with Ukraine for as long as it takes. Ministers will also address how to step up our practical support for Bosnia and Herzegovina, Georgia and Moldova. Three valued NATO partners which face Russian threats. On Wednesday, allies will take decisions to further strengthen our deterrence and defence. We have already done a lot, placing 40,000 troops under NATO command in the eastern part of the Alliance, backed by major air and naval power, and doubling the number of battle groups from four to eight. Now we need to ensure we have the right forces and capabilities for the longer term. So I expect allies will agree new guidance for NATO defense planning. This will be a key driver of capability changes and ensure credible deterrence and defense in the years to come. Ministers will also focus on ways to increase our defense industrial capacity and replenish stockpiles. The war in Ukraine is consuming an enormous amount of ammunition and depleting Allied stockpiles. The current rate of Ukraine's ammunition expenditure is many times higher than our current rate of production. This puts our defense industries under strain. For example, the waiting time for large caliber ammunition has increased from 12 to 28 months. Orders placed today would only be delivered two and a half years later. So we need to ramp up production and invest in our production capacity. NATO has just completed an extraordinary survey of our munition stockpiles. 
And we plan to increase our targets for munition stockpiles through the NATO defense planning process. The good news is that several allies, including the United States and France, have already signed new multi-year contracts with the defense industry, enabling them to invest in increased production capacity. I look for, forward to for, further progress. This is essential to ensure we can keep supporting Ukraine while protecting, protecting every inch of allied territory. The protection of um, critical undersea infrastructure will also be high on our agenda. NATO has been working on this for many years, and we are now taking it into the next level. We have decided to establish a new coordination cell at uh, NATO headquarters to map our vulnerabilities and engage with industry. This will support our efforts to prevent and counter threats to critical infrastructure, including undersea cables and pipelines. And leaders at the Vilnius Summit will take further decisions to step up our efforts in this area. We will also work closely with the European Union through the NATO-EU Task Force on Resilience and Critical Infrastructure. NATO continues to adapt in all domains, including in space, which is becoming more crowded and competitive. This week, I expect allies will agree to establish a new virtual network of national um, and commercial satellites. This will improve our intelligence and surveillance and support NATO missions and operations. It will allow allies to increase the sharing of space-based data with a NATO command structure, facilitating better navigation, communication and early warning of missile launches. All of this work requires continued investment in our defence. So ministers will discuss ways to maintain and step up defence spending across the alliance. We are on the right track with eight consecutive years of increases by European allies and Canada. And an additional 350 billion extra spent so uh, far. I expect we will see further increases in defence spending this year, but we need to keep up the momentum. Our decisions this week will pave uh, the way for our summit in Vilnius in July and help keep our people safe in a more dangerous world. With that, I'm ready to take your questions. <laughs>